Oh, already video 5 in my little CNC series. I said that there will be 5 videos in total, right? Well, I guess it will be more 6 or 7 videos at the end or so. In the last mechanics video, I had assembled the boards for the X and Y direction. Time to make them move via the stepper motors. I start with the X axis layer. I am using M8 stainless steel rods for moving my boards. They are mounted with standard couplings to the stepper motors. There is by the way not really a way to get around buying these connectors, which are used to connect a 5mm axle to a 8mm one. They are designed to transmit torque, but they also allow a small misalignment of the motor axle to the driving shaft. They are also not designed to stand push or pull force. In my setup, the force is taken by the other side of my axles, where I use a ball bearing as mount point. Each axle has a bearing assembly made from a ball bearing and two nuts. I have the assembly here and the large screw in the middle is where the axle will be later. A large washer is attached to a small wooden board with the bearing clamped in the middle. Both sides have a hole which is large enough for the nuts to fit in, so that the axle can spin freely. Well, my nuts were almost fitting in the holes. I had to grind them down a little bit, so that I can move them a bit sideways when necessary. The washer is attached to the board with four screws, which allow me to fix the bearing tightly. I ran into a really annoying problem. Look at that. When I spin the axle with a drill, the plate stays not vertical to the axle, but wobbles a little bit. That means that my axle would wobble when the plate is attached to the base plate. This would stress all components and reduce the precision. There are several reasons for that problem imaginable. My nuts might not be exact. The axle might be a tiny bit smaller than my bearing, so that it does not sit exactly in the middle. And the thread in my rod might not be cut with exact constant steepness. There are three things that solve the problem for me. I have ground the nuts exactly flat using my rotary grinder. I have also put a thin piece of steel in between axle and bearing, which I had cut out from a beer can. And finally, the position of the nuts on the rod matters. I have turned the nuts in 20 degree steps until I found a spot where the residual errors equaled each other out. Metal plates from the hardware store are used for mounting the motors. I have made a plastic stencil for the holes so that I can mark my holes precisely. I can use some of the existing holes in my plate and just have to widen them a little bit to one side. The motor is attached to the plate like that. I have drilled out the thread from some of my M3 nuts so that they are like thick washers now. With the washers I can screw the motor to the plate and the middle piece of the motor does not touch it. So when I tighten the screws nothing will bend. I attached the ball bearing assembly with the axle to the base plate. Now I needed to center the axle as precisely as possible. For that I assembled the sliders for both boards. I have cut a gap into a sticker that is exactly as wide as my axle is thick and stuck it to the upper board. Now, when I slide the board back and forth, the slider rattles on either side when the axle is not perfectly centered. I move the motor until I find the position where the sticker edges keep the exact same distance to the axle and then mark the holes. I can fine tune the position a bit because the motor can be shifted a little left and right on the mount plate. The motor is mounted and a last precision test shows me whether the position is ok. I have used wing nuts made of nylon to drive my boards, mostly because they are easier to handle than metal nuts and probably run more quietly. To increase stability, I used two nuts for each board and I mounted them on the boards like that. With the first nut assembly finished, my boards for the X axis can move driven by its motor. The second motor assembly is built in the same way. The bearing plate and the motor plate are built to the first board now and so they have less space. I added stabilizer boards to the board for that reason. 
The ball bearing assembly is similar to the one in the first board. Again, I have to carefully grind down the nuts. I am using my disc grinding tool here, which you can see in another video. Again, I am using a sticker to test whether my axle is perfectly centered. Also, the nut assembly looks like the one for the first level. Some grooves are cut into the boards to make space for the connectors. After both assemblies are finished, I use some glue to fix the nylon nuts and also the other nuts, so that they don't get loose over time and maybe due to vibration. When I took a very close look at one of my ball bearings, I realized that they move sideways a tiny bit. This might turn into a precision problem for my machine. As solution, each axle will get a steel ball assembly as stabilizer. For that, I am grinding a little dimple into the top of the axle. The steel ball is positioned at this place and pressed firmly a little bit against the axle. This will keep it from moving back and forth, so I hope. My second board gets a plate attached, which I can replace easily later on when necessary. This plate is, so to speak, the sacrifice plate. When it gets damaged during some drilling jobs later on, it is not a disaster. With that, the lower part of my machine is finished. Let's do a first position test. I attach the machine to my electronics so that I can control it. I also attach a pencil to this bar here and hope that it doesn't move. With the keypad, I am drawing a square with a side length of 1 cm. And I don't start in the corner, but in the middle of one side. When the square is finished, I take a very close look at it. There is no warping visible and the length and width is perfect. The start of the line meets the end of it almost perfectly. Looks like the position of my machine is actually pretty good. Time for building the bridge. It will look like that, more or less. With the aluminium bars left and right that suspend the bridge and the horizontal wooden board in the middle. The first two sliders are attached in the same way as was level 1 and 2. Now I need to attach sliders 3 and 4 in 90 degree angle. I glue them to the aluminium bars first, so that I can drill the holes precisely after the glue has dried. Then the bars are screwed to the sliders and also to the board with a piece of particle board as spacer. My tool holder must be of very hard wood and so I used a kitchen cutting board for that. A square is cut into the pieces for the holder and its sides are cut away a little so that the tool fits nicely. Now I can use a steel ball to center the walls perfectly. I am grinding off material from the side that is too long until the steel ball touches all sides perfectly. Again, I attach two stabilizer pieces so that the bearing holder and the motor plate have more surface to lie on. The motor mount plate has to be smaller this time because it needs to fit between the two sliders. The bearing plate looks pretty much the same as before and again I use a sticker to center the axle perfectly. I had some problems mounting the motor plate because I could not mount the motor when the plate was attached and vice versa. My solution for that problem was using a plastic spacer between plate and board that allowed me to fix the screws of the motor with a tiny self-made wrench. The nylon nut assembly is a bit smaller than before, because there is less space on the z-axis plate. I assemble everything, and then also the bridge is finished. Four aluminium rods are prepared and mounted to the bridge. Then the bridge is screwed to the base plate. Two horizontal aluminium rods are mounted to the bridge plate for bending stability. I am building a long box from particle board that will house my electronic parts. My electronics gets built into that box 
which is then mounted to the back of my machine. The box contains the two Arduinos, my several self-made circuit boards, the three big easy drivers and the board from a USB hub as central power source. My big easy drivers need cooling. I tried to order fitting coolers for them at SparkFun, but they were out of stock. So I ended up ordering these coolers instead and cut them down. They are attached to the boards with special cooler tape. The box also contains some plug connectors for energy, sensor switches and for my control box. It also contains a switch that I can use to switch off and on the power for the motors. I have cut the data traces for one of the ports of the USB hub. This port is powering the Arduino that runs my own software. The Arduino doesn't need a connection to the PC and also the software that I'm using for sending G-code is resetting all serial ports that it can find at the beginning. So also that Arduino would be reset and then would forget, for example, the position values. The control box is made of particle board as well and it contains the LCD, the keypad, a LED and a cancel button. With the boxes finished, only some small stuff is left that I will show in the next video. I will then also show the first milling examples and how to get from a drawing to a milled object using Inkscape. See you next time.